Hello Aditya, welcome to GMAX Studios. Thank you so much for having me on. From chartered accountancy to uh, from a well charted out path to photography, how did that happen? Um, it's been it's been quite a journey. It's it's unbelievable actually. When I look back and think about the days when I used to go into my article ship, uh, I can't even remember those days anymore. Uh, it was I think uh, just a whole bunch of things that happened one after the other that led me to the decision of dropping out. Um, one of them was obviously I wasn't enjoying it. Not I was. It was not like I was bad at it, but I wasn't enjoying doing this uh, full time. But uh, that apart, I think uh, there was one particular incident where um, I was asked to interview a chartered accountant, and I wasn't yet a qualified chartered accountant. And that for me was like, what's the point of this whole degree? If, uh, Ten years down the line, some kid who knows nothing about what I've studied interviews me. So, so I, I think that really pushed me over the edge. And then, and uh, then I sat back to think about what I'm really good at in life. Unfortunately, there weren't too many things, but photography was something I was decent at. So then, that's what I went with. So, what did you start shooting first? Um, everything. Uh, I was a confused mess, is what I was. As as we all are. I mean, flowers and uh, ants and dragonflies and whatnot. I mean, I think I've shot everything. I've, I've, I've been shooting from when I was a kid, but not as much as till it became digital. Uh, when I got digital, I think I just shot everything that I could see. A bit too much, but uh, eventually, I learned the whole process of. Uh, you know, training your eye to exactly what it is that you want to shoot and what you're really interested in shooting. You have, you know, uh, this knack of shooting on a smartphone, and that's what you know really inspires people. Ever since you gave that talk, I can see people right out in the corridor uh, trying to frame something with their smartphone. What's with that? I mean, why did you choose that as a medium? I think I've, I've always been interested in smartphone photography in general. I think it's uh, simple, it's no nonsense. You have one focal length, you have a very restricted platform. At least it used to be. I mean, cameras today have gotten on the phone so good uh, that they're really beginning to compete with some of the point and shoots. But uh, for me, it was really challenging. I, I found myself becoming lazy at one point where I had the best of equipment with me. And if I was sitting outside and I'd be like, I don't have this lens, so I don't think I want to shoot which as a photographer is a bad thing. I mean, you want to be shooting no matter what equipment you have on you. And I think uh, smartphone photography is a way for me to get back to the basics and just be disciplined in the way I shoot something. If you have to get close, you have to move yourself physically than being lazy and picking out another lens from your bag. And what I also find is it's, it's a lot more discreet and you're a lot less troubled by people around you. I'm, I'm not a very social person as hard as it is to believe. But for me, I, I like to work alone and I don't like to draw too much attention towards me because that affects the way people around you are. So for me, I find smartphones being a lot more easier to shoot with. People around you are pretty affected by you in the sense that you seem to zone out of conversations Joseph was telling me and that it's really, you know, um, quite crazy to be around you. Mid-sentence, you drift off when you see a picture and you just start taking pictures, that's so? Yeah, I think I do that a bit too often. I think uh, I just got recently married and my wife has been noticing that as well. I mean, it's happened a few times. Uh, I showed a few examples actually on stage where we'd have this conversation and I'd let her walk away into the shot and then she'd continue talking but I'd take a picture of her and then she'd be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> but I think um, it's just something that I'm interested in and the reason I shoot on my phone so much is it also helps me document ideas for any future shots I may want to make. Um, so, which is why I'm constantly looking for something or the other around me. It's a little annoying to people around me, I guess, but uh, I, I think they'll understand eventually. Could you elaborate on uh, the future shots that you might want to make? What does that mean? I think, um, so sometimes I may see light falling in a particular place um, at a certain angle or I may see a, a particular texture somewhere that I may want to use for some of my shots eventually on a, on a bigger camera, but I don't have a camera with me at that point. 
So it's a good way for me to just archive ideas and keep them all documented on my phone. And I always go back and I have this uh, photos from my collection that I put in another folder saying someday I'd like to shoot. And I keep going back to that and revisiting and seeing if I, it's that something that I'd like to revisit and shoot again. You pay a lot of emphasis to uh, composition. I mean, your compositions are something really people talk about and they, are, they really stand apart. Is it something that uh, you worked upon? Were you conscious of? How did that come to be? I, I'm not really sure actually. I don't even know because I've never formally studied uh, photography. So everything that I've learned has been from the University of Google. So for me, it's just whatever I found here and there. I've tried out a whole bunch of stuff and I failed miserably plenty of times. And I've learned from that and I think in some way I have built my own way of uh, composing. Um, but there's, there's nothing really that I pay attention to, it's just how I want to keep what in. And I think um, I, sh I shot this uh, series with a painter once and for me I learned a bit from him because uh, up until that point I was always looking at all the elements that I want to include in my shot but I never went negatively into that list. But a painter was uh, painting Charminar and I was looking at what he was doing. Uh, but he had the liberty of removing the cables from the shot and removing all of these things. And I never used to pay attention to things I wanted to move out of my shot. So that's something that I uh, put into my way of composing is making sure I don't have any element in the photo that I don't want to be a part of the story that I'm trying to tell. Uh, but otherwise visually I just think I go with whatever I feel like at that moment. So you're not worried about the technicalities at all? Um, I'm worried about the technicalities in terms of uh, I want my images to be sharp when I do want them to be that way. I don't want them to be overly noisy. I want them to not be blown out uh, where I don't want them to be. Those things I really care about. But I guess in terms of framing, I just go with whatever feels right to me. And uh, for me, I think my way of representing what I see in front of me is exactly the way I want to tell it. So I frame it in whatever way. It, it may be technically incorrect at times, I guess, but it's some, something that I see it in a certain way. So from the time you take a picture on your smartphone to the time it is finished, could you take us through the steps that you uh, take? On? Um, I firstly take a, a couple of different shots and make sure that I have exactly the shot I have in mind. I may move around a few times and uh, try to uh, make sure that everything I have is on the, is on the phone. Uh, from there, it usually goes on uh, Snapseed. Uh, that's my to-go app for uh, editing on the phone I think is really intuitive. You can use your fingers to dodge and burn uh, and do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Um, I also use uh, Photoshop Mobile if I need to denoise because I think that's the that's the app. That's the one thing that uh, Snapseed is missing actually, denoise. Um, and then that's about it. There's nothing else that I really do. Um, I probably just play a little bit of the contrast. On Snapseed I mostly use structure and ambience and uh, nothing else. And if I do feel like a little bit of dodge and burn but that's about how much I do. No VSCO for you? I've tried my hand at VSCO here and there. I, I find very, very little use for it uh, for the most part. I, I'm even subscribed to that VSCO X, I think. But I think you'll find 1 in 20 or 25 shots maybe make it to VSCO. For the most part, I don't really think uh, I end up using it. I, the only time I actually use it is when I want to change the colors in the sky a little bit. Uh, because they have plenty of options for the sky. So I end up using that every now and then uh, when I feel the need to, but very rarely. You have such a cult following on uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook at, even now it has about what, 800,000 people. So uh, how do you deal with all of that? Uh, it's absolutely overwhelming. I mean, for a kid who knew nothing about photography and having no background in it to uh, being uh, sort of followed and my work relating to so many different people is actually extremely overwhelming for me. Uh, I'm extremely humbled and super awkward uh, as I have a selfie face that I've gotten ready now and I can just do every time that somebody wants to come to me for a picture. But I don't understand why they want to have a picture with this face but I mean if they want it then I always make it a point to take a picture with them because because um, they're taking a part of their day or a little bit of time to come and interact with me and it's only fair that I do the same back in turn because uh, because that's just how it works. I mean, it's, it's really important to soak it all in and uh, just be humble as no matter how awkward you are. Um, that's, that's just the way I approach it. Um, I never started out knowing that I would have a following. I, I didn't even know that uh, it would grow to be what it is today. For me, it was just a way of putting up images for free because my parents are already paying for the internet connection, right? So for me, it was just where I could put up something for free. A website still needed money. So that's what I did with Facebook and that's just turned into something else altogether. 
your Instagram handle, Audi. Yeah. Was that a thought out strategy? Were you aware that there's a like brand name built in right there? Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, I, it was never, I was always called Audi from a, when I was a kid. I mean, people don't believe me and I'll show you my Aadhaar card later. <laughs> you can link it to this video, but <laughs> uh, it's A-U-D-I-T-Y-A. My dad jokes around that he wanted me to be an auditor, so he put audit in my name. But uh, that's why Auditya happened. And I was always called Audi as a kid, uh, not Adi. So that's just a name that I went with, just nickname photography, you know. So that's all it. That's all it happened. I even remember emailing uh, Audi at some point saying, "Hey, uh, you know, th this is what I'm writing." Obviously, they don't care about some little kid back in Bangalore. <laughs> I didn't want it to be some copyright issue. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was really scared legally that they'll come one day and say ban you. <laughs> but thankfully, nothing's happened. <laughs> So, uh, does all this whatever thing around the smartphone uh, photographer, whatever, cult status, all of that, does it affect you uh, as your perception as a serious photographer, professional photographer? I don't think so. I think there is, I mean, misconceptions here and there that I only shoot on a smartphone. I obviously have, uh, I shoot properly on cameras. I mean, uh, I, I have access to the best of equipment uh, out there and I shoot a whole bunch of different things. But I end up sharing a lot of smartphone photos because a lot of people email me and message me saying I don't have a bigger camera, is it possible to make images every day? And uh, I really think um, I want to address that question because I don't want people getting into a rut thinking if you don't have a specific brand of camera, you don't have a specific level of camera, you're not able to make images. Uh, and you should be able to make images irrespective of what uh, camera you're using, be it on a phone or a DSLR or a mirrorless. Um, and that's why I share so many smartphone photos. I'm, Fair enough that people think I only shoot on smartphones because I only put out that work and I put out mostly personal work. I never put out my commercial work online. Um, but I, I don't think it's ever affected me because my clients know what I do. Um, they have my portfolio and they've seen the work I do and they hire me for that. I think uh, online is just a way of sharing my stories and interacting with people who like to listen to them. How did the jump from smartphone from where you started to the serious kind of professional photography. I mean, I was shooting serious stuff before smartphone photography. So, smartphones is just something that I sh started shooting as and when they started getting better with time. But uh, it was never the other way around. It was never smartphones first and cameras later. It was always cameras first and smartphone in the middle and now every day. Would you have any word for the young aspiring photographers that uh, you have interacted with there and those who are watching this video? I think... Um, the most important thing is to, as cliche as it sounds, is to be yourself when you're taking a picture. Uh, it's to cut out everybody else uh, and take a picture exactly the way you see something in the story that you want to tell. Because quite often we might get uh, caught up with, but people like this more. And I mean, I have had uh, pictures where uh, uh, I would have put so much thought into composing it and so much time and then not really getting the kind of interaction that people would associate with a regular sunset or a cute dog photo. I mean, people like the sunset and the dog, not my photo, right? Uh, but uh, don't pay attention to that. I mean, take everything uh, just from your perspective and that's what people will begin to associate with you. Um, this was the advice that I got when I started off, when uh, I started with that whole bunch of confused mess and I took my work to a photographer and I showed it to him. He said, I see so many different photos, but I don't really know what you shoot. I see everything under the sun. But I don't know what what makes you a photographer or why I should come to you. And that really made me fine-tune my, my style of shooting and what it is that I'm interested in shooting. That really sets me, not apart, but at least sets me in a place where people recognize my work uh, in specific. When they look at a picture and they'll be able to tell, okay, this is his work. Without being too predictable, obviously. But I think that really goes a long way. And uh, I think shooting everything exactly the way you want to see it and want people to see your vision, I think that's the most important thing. So, and also there, there's this huge misconception, you know, the way that goes with smartphone photography, especially, you know, I get it a lot that, uh, you know, people think that, you know, you, when you do take a picture with a smartphone or uh, take a photograph, it requires any less amount of patience and, you know, or any less amount of concentration just because you can whip it out uh, from a pocket and uh, take it without, you know, too much twiddling around. So, what would you say to that? I mean, that holds good for selfies, I think. But uh, if you're really trying to shoot something seriously, it, it's actually a lot more effort because um, you have a really small sensor to start with. You have barely any depth of field to play around with. You have, uh, in lower lights, a lot more noise than you would get on a bigger camera. Um, a whole bunch of things that are really holding you back. A grip on a camera is obviously a lot more ergonomic for you than a smartphone. 
Um, there are a whole bunch of things that are really uh, in play. It, it actually does take a lot more concentration. There's no option for you to change lenses and uh, shoot something from far away. So while it is easier in, in the sense that um, you just have to click one button and not have to worry about anything else, that's not necessarily easy. That actually makes it a lot more challenging. And I find the reason I go back to smartphone photography so much is because it's a challenge for me every day to make images of things around me. Um, it does take um, as much work. Uh, you just probably don't have to carry as much equipment around, but it still definitely work. So what according to you is composition in a photograph and what are the most important elements that within a composition that you would pay attention to as a photographer? For me, at the end of the day, it just comes down to what are you trying to show your audience or what are you trying to show the person looking at the picture? Are you able to draw their eyes exactly to that thing or are they distracting elements that's taking your, your eyes away from it? For me, that's the most important thing, um, which is why you'll probably find a lot of my images a lot more simple than complex because that's all I want to do. I'm taking images of just things that I want to draw the audience's eye to and that's for me the most important thing. I obviously also uh, factor a lot of light and contrast into my images because the eye is always looking for contrast. The eye is always looking for things like that to be drawn attention to. But it all comes down to that one thing. How are you leading your eyes of your audience to that particular subject in the image that you want them to look at. Thank you so much, or It's really been a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I, I've loved being here and uh, speaking about all of these different things. And it's always interesting for me to share it, either online or offline, about whatever little bit I know. And I can't wait to see what you have of other speakers and I can't wait to watch those videos as well. Hi, this is Aditya Venkatesh and you're watching GMAX Studios, an amazing place to learn photography if you're really interested. Mm -hmm.